Let's do this. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Good afternoon from LA. We're um, so thankful that you're joining us. We're thrilled to be able to bring you this um, virtual design program. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Lottie McKinnon. I'm Teleflora's uh, Program Director of Industry Relations and Education. Um, Renee has a ton of incredible information to share with you uh, today. And so I will keep the intro kind of short and sweet. Just a couple of um, housekeeping things for you. Um, first of all, this, will, this is being recorded and I will be posting this on our uh, Facebook page uh, with a little link to a Vimeo uh, video. So if you could hop over to um, our Facebook page, Teleflora Industry Relations and Education, um, and then that we also post all kinds of information about videos we've done, about some upcoming virtual programs. Um, we're gonna be kind of presenting a, a bunch of um, programs and videos this summer just to help you through, um, you know, kind of these challenging times that, that um, we're dealing with. Um, and second of all, I wanted to invite you um, to ask questions throughout. Um, I'll be kind of moderating and asking Renee. She's got me in her um, ear there. So I will try and um, only ask you questions every now and again, Renee. <laughs> but, um, no if you have any questions, please type in the, the Q&A function on, um, in your app there. And um, yeah, so that's it from me. Without further ado, I would like to introduce my colleague, uh, Joyce Christ, who's calling us today. Hi, Joyce. Have Hi, you got Lottie. Words? Hi, honey. Uh, thanks for putting this together, Lottie. It's a, this Thank is you. a fantastic virtual program. And we're featuring a wonderfully talented Renee Tucci. And I wanna thank everybody for attending and we're in for a real treat tonight, folks. And I've seen Renee in action, and I can assure you that you will totally be amazed by her design reboot program. My name is Joyce Christ, and I'm one of the territory managers here at Teleflora. And I'm very proud of our educational programs, as well as our cutting edge products, services, and technologies here at Teleflora. So it's with my pleasure now to in introduce our unit program uh, president Jean Ha. Uh, Jean is the unit president for the Maryland, Virginia, Delaware chapter, Virginia tap chapter, and along with our board, her board, they work diligently to provide essential program education to the community with both business and design practices. And it's with my pleasure to turn this over to Jean. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Good evening. This is Jean, your uh, Telefora DC Virginia Maryland unit president. I'm pleased to bring Renee to this program tonight to you. Um, I met Renee a, long, a while ago, a long time ago at the unit present, Telefora unit presence meeting when we were both rookie presents. She, <laughs> she has been uh, worked nearly 20 years in retail as a manager and chief designers and she, lately she began uh, her freelancing with local and national retail and event studios um, she's been working as a retail but she's been uh, working with consumer education and she's been invited to design for the large project uh, like philadelphia flower show and beyond philadelphia she is passionate, professional, and caring. That's the three words that I found to describe you. <laughs> she is always researching trends and new designs, uh, exciting designs, but profitable designs for her clients. And her wide range of exper experiences from retail, consumer education, and to the big scale exhibit will shed great inspiration for our new beginning. Um, it is my pleasure to bring to the stage Renee Tucci, AIFD, PFCI. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jean. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Lottie and uh, Teleflora for your support of design education. I am absolutely filled with gratitude to be presenting to you all today. Uh, I can almost feel all of you through our virtual world here. I'm honored to be on the educational specialist team, also known as EdSpex, and I'm thrilled to be coming to you from my home studio in Bucks County, Pennsylvania through the uh, magic of the internet. So thank you, internet. Uh, tonight's program title is Design Reboot, Reset, Refresh, and Revive. Uh, 
So what are we going to be talking about tonight? Well, after a few surprisingly successful spring holidays, we're gonna talk about how to move forward from here. We're gonna share some design ideas, touch on some social media fun. We're gonna mention some of those uh, Teleflora differences, the, the ways that Teleflora is so awesome, and we'll share some sources of inspiration. I'd like to thank Flower Buyer for providing uh, many of the flowers that you're going to see here today. They were a great support for us when we reached out as we started to plan this program. If you're not already using Flower Buyer, I urge you to try it. Um, it's a really unique online auction style um, bit, uh, buying platform where you can get some incredibly beautiful, fresh Farm Direct flowers sent to you at what some might call a steal, if you happen to have your clicker finger at the ready at the right moment. So definitely check out Flower Buyer. You're gonna hear me talk about trying a lot of new things tonight, and that's because I think now is the time. We have no, nothing to lose, right? So I think as far as, uh, as grabbing life by the horns goes, we're in it. So definitely check out Flower Buyer. Uh, now, I can't beat around the bush. There's, there's no question that we're living in some serious times right now. Um, it's, things are changing by the day. It can be absolutely exhausting to try to keep up with it all. And it's challenging to uh, meet all the needs and demands and safety precautions that we have to do, that we have to meet. But it's not insurmountable. So it's exciting that many states are working towards their reopening and uh, including Maryland. I spoke with um, Jean a few days ago about how she's handling uh, the new precautions in her store and what she's doing to keep everyone safe. And um, she's got some um, directional areas in her store leading her customers um, down certain paths. She's got hand sanitizer everywhere. Everyone's wearing masks. She's got the Plexi Shield at her checkout area, um, all the new necessary things. She's taken over some of her merchandise area and made it uh, more of a design space so that her designers are able to stretch out and socially distance. Um, her customers are coming in one at a time, not in families, not in groups, uh, and that's on purpose. And all of these things are so important uh, when it comes to moving forward, really. Uh, now. The most important thing on, about all of this is that you really have to educate your customers and let them know what to expect when they come to your store. So maybe that is, well, there's three ways you should be doing that. Firstly, is your website. You should be updating your website regularly. And I mean, like when I say regularly, I mean daily or every other day, as often as things are changing for you. I want your customers to log on to your site and notice that something is new, a flag pops up that says, here's where we are now. Here's what our hours are today. Here's how you order curbside. Um, you know, here's what to expect when you get to our store. Um, make sure you wear a mask, things like that, and update it frequently, maybe at a date, so that folks know that you're really on top of it. Uh, additionally, you should be posting on your social media just as frequently because sometimes people are only looking at social media. Uh, and maybe that's just a, a daily photo of your cooler so that folks know what you're dealing with. And when you're trying to take orders, you can refer them to that photo. Hey, check out the photo I put on my Facebook page this morning. Then you can see uh, what we have in stock today. And lastly, uh, you should be updating your uh, services on your Google business page. So if you have not already claimed your Google business listing, you must do it, it's absolutely vital. And then once you do that, you have to keep an eye on it. I believe a few weeks ago, there was a glitch where it actually said that some shops were closed when they weren't closed. Um, so you just have to watch those algorithms and make sure that everything is saying what you want it to say. But the good news is that flower sales are up. Everyday flower sales are up. Virtual classes are up. Uh, People want flowers. People are hungry for flowers. And if we can be forward thinking and, and uh, progressive, then we can innovate our way through this and we can come out the other side stronger and better than we were, right? 
So I hope some I hope you all got to watch the webinar that Aaron Kaufman presented with Teleflora on Wednesday. Lottie and Aaron did such a great job. He gave some really great tips on how to innovate your way through the next few weeks or months. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to watch that, check out the uh, Teleflora Ind Industry Relations Facebook page. The full video is live there. Um, but thanks to our friends at Rutgers, we know it is a proven fact that not only do flowers make people happier than we know, but they have positive effects on our emotional well-being as well. And so many people need that, right? We are living in an uncertain and scary time. And the quarantine has been difficult for a lot of people. A lot of folks are dealing with uh, isolation and loneliness and uncertainty. And the good news is, is that we hold the key. Floral designers hold the key. We've got the, the goods that can help make people happy and bring them back. So we have to harness that and move forward with that. How do we do that? Well, we have to reboot. Everybody with me, let's take a deep breath, okay? Ready, in, out. That's how you start a reboot. You've got to center, you've got to get back to basics, you've got to think about what makes you happy? Why did you get into this to begin with? What are your favorite flowers? What kind of designs do you like to do and what do you not like to do? My friends Vonda and her team over at the Business and Pleasure of Flowers had a great podcast a few weeks ago that uh, talked about rooting out the things that stress you out. If there are suppliers that you haven't really enjoyed working with or employees that have sort of been giving you trouble or designs that you don't like doing, reassess that. If there are things that are keeping you in bed in the morning and keeping you from jumping up and going to the shop, think about how do we change those processes and systems so that you can get back into loving it again. And when you love your work, it will show. When you post photos of your work, when you put up um, new listings on your website, it will show and your people will follow you. They will find you and they will follow you. What do I love? I love something like this. Of course, as you can probably tell, yellow is my favorite color. I call it my signature color. Uh, so of course I'm loving this. I love the forms of this. I've got a lot of repeating forms. I love the bounciness of the butterfly ranunculus. Um, now some of these forms, uh, I'm sorry, some of these flowers are a little bit on the edge. So if this were me, I would just take these and instead of just tossing them and marking them as shrink, I would do what I just did, whip up a little bouquet. Take a picture and post it on your social media. And then when you do that, you're gonna use your hashtags. Now, I'm gonna talk a lot tonight about social media. I'm warning you now because I've studied it. If you already follow me, you know that because I've been very active these past three or four months. I decided that COVID was my time to learn how to use social media for the betterment of florists. So of course I haven't learned everything, but I've learned a few things. And one of them is how important hashtags are and the fact that brides and customers are using this search function in Instagram like they used to use the search function in Google. So if they're looking for a purple bridal bouquet, they're gonna search for that in the explore box on Instagram instead of Pinterest or Google. That's the way that things are moving, that's the trend. So when I post a picture of this, I'm gonna post hashtag roses, hashtag astilbees, hashtag yarrow, hashtag pink, hashtag yellow hashtag right okay i'm going to do lots of hashtags but i'm going to also um well i've developed a few hashtags or i shouldn't say developed but i've created some very fancy and sophisticated signs to show you this evening so that you can maybe start with some simple hashtags if you're not already posting on social media take these hashtags and start using them and help use them to help you get into a consistent routine. So in my list of hashtags, I'm also gonna hashtag WW, Wedding Wednesday. It's an oldie but a goodie, and it's a perfect time to start getting into Wedding Wednesday. Number one, as I mentioned, if you're not already consistent and have a routine, doing it on a Wednesday will help you get consistent. Um, secondly, micro weddings, as we were just chatting about before we started here, they are starting. Um, they are coming in strong. The mini monies, as Mr. Hosek taught us a few weeks ago, are coming in. And so if that's something you want to position yourself to be able to do, you need to be posting about that. You need to be celebrating that on your website and your social media. So make sure you, uh, you are doing that. So this is my happy bouquet. It makes me happy. Moving on, we have a lot of things to share with you today. So I am going to try to watch my time and, and move things along here. Um, let's move on to some containers. So I am using mostly 
all Teleflora containers tonight because number one, I love Teleflora, and number two, they're fantastic. Um, this is the Marvelous Mosaic container, and hopefully you can see, hopefully the lights aren't too bright that you can see that there's a beautiful candle glowing inside of there. This container originally was brought out for um, Admin Day 2020. I spoke with Eloisa in product development a few days ago at Teleflora, and she let me know that it's been so popular, they're actually moving it to the everyday collection. And she also wanted me to share with you that it, they take their job very seriously, but more than that, they take what you say, what, your floor, what our floral designers say about their containers incredibly seriously. So if you see those surveys come through your emails and they send them out about a year before a new container launches, they send a survey out, they ask for your opinion, they really listen to it. Trust me when I tell you that. So keep an eye out for those surveys and it's kind of fun to get to say you played a part in it, right? So uh, they are doing a really great job of developing containers that are lifestyle inspired, that will not only work for a holiday, but will live on. Um, and containers that work together well in a collection so that when you're setting up your merchandising in your store, it all gels and it looks great. It's to make your job easier. That's what all of this is all about. So keep an eye out for those surveys. All right, so this is beautiful with a candle. Let's put some flowers in it without burning ourselves. All right. So I have actually pre-designed a little drop-in arrangement here, and this is, oh, I love this design. I know it's got yellow in it. Of course I love this design, um, but it's really a, a linear design, and that's because I wanted to show off the container. It's so beautiful. I didn't want to add a lot of fluff, although that would have been beautiful as well. So I just took some Oncidium orchids and some miniature succulents. I created a focal area with the mini succulents, um, added in some bamboo poles because I thought that just went with the look so well, and a thrush of the flax or the pandanus leaves. Um, I did want to show you how I worked the pandanus into here. As you know, they're a very broad leaf. And so if you don't shave that down, it's going to take up way too much of your oasis. So what I actually did, I'm gonna start from scratch here so I can show you. I actually, leaving the center vein, I cut up on each side and made about a, a T, something like that. And look, that's what goes into my foam. And that's gonna take up a lot less real estate. It rests on the foam right where that uh, cut ends and it looks really beautiful. So that's a tip on how to use um, a large leaf in a smaller design. And this is our marvelous mosaic. Okay. Oh, I swear I can hear the applause. I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. We've got our serendipity vase here. Um, this is another wonderful, super awesome utility vase from Teleflora. It is plastic um, and it comes in lots of different colors. I love this color palette, the lavender, the green, the blue. It's really, really pleasing and serene. Um, it's perfect for this time of year. But what I wanted to talk about really in terms of this design was that this is the perfect kind of design to use when you start doing your virtual classes with your customers. If you're not already doing your Zoom and Bloom classes and tapping into those work from home customers, you need to start. It is an incredible way to connect with your community. I mean, I'm doing it with you right now through the magic of the internet I'm connecting with you and you can do that too with your customers um, SAF actually came out with a webinar a few weeks ago about how to go about setting up a virtual class for your customers um, I think safnow.org you can go to their website and check out that webinar or reach out to me I've been doing virtual classes for a few months now and it's really incredible it's fun just like this I get to do it in my home studio um, and you know have soft pants on beneath what everyone else can see um, and it will keep your uh, customers coming back and coming back the important thing is when they're done the class they have to post about it and you have to encourage them to post about it so what you want them to do is uh, post on their social media Instagram Facebook stories whatever and they have to tag you and tag your shop and post a photo and talk about how much fun they had it only takes a tiny bit of encouragement to get people to do that and once you do that you are going to create FOMO. 
hashtag FOMO stands for fear of missing out. And so what that's going to do is that's going to make all of that person's friends jealous that they weren't in this virtual class. They're going to click on your profile. They're going to start following you, find out when your next class is. And FOMO is real. It is real. And your people will want to follow you after that. So that's our serendipity base. The other reason I love this for um, uh, this type of design, this Zoom and Bloom or however, whatever platform you'd like to use is that it's got a cinch in the middle. And we all know when we're designing something with a cinch in the middle, helps give us that nice flared effect, which is great for beginners. It helps them set them up for success right off the bat. So now I'm actually gonna leave this here when we bring in our other two pieces because my next topic is about transparency. And Aaron, at his webinar on Wednesday talked about this a little bit, but I think it's really important that um, when you are talking with your customers right now, that you let them know that the supply chain, the flower supply chain hasn't quite recovered like the rest of us. It just, it hasn't quite recovered yet. It's getting there and we're getting more and more availability, but it is not quite recovered. So for these small gatherings that are gonna start happening, these dinner parties, things like that, when folks call up and want centerpieces, try your best, don't try, do, sell your customers a party pack. And that will, that means that you're selling them a color scheme and a style. Maybe a one or two flowers that they definitely like included, like maybe a rose or something like that. But what you wanna do is sell colors and style. So maybe that is a more um, sleek style or a traditional style or a modern style. But you're selling a party pack which will come with three or five or whatever you choose, different designs. Maybe you'll tell them you'll have one that's good for an entrance area, one that's good for a kitchen island, and one that's good for uh, a cocktail table or a desk or something like that. And don't worry, ma'am, it will be in your, in your color scheme and in your feel, and just trust me, I know what I'm doing. And let them know you'll be able to give them extra value because you're gonna be able to source what's really on hand right now. The best part is that you'll be able to use up containers that happen to be just sitting around. So you won't have to do a special order of 12 of this exact something. So if you happen to have onesies, go ahead and collect them. Start, cur start curating collections that you can post and sell as a set. Um, and not only will that be cool and beautiful, but it'll be different from whatever their friends are getting because you're not going to be able to repeat this twice. You do need to have a unifying element though. So you'll see, hopefully you can see on all three of these, I have created this um, purple aluminum wire chain uh, around the vase. And I did that so that there was a unifying element so that when folks are walking around this party, they know, oh, they really belong together. Um, and just real quickly, I'm gonna show you how I made this chain. So I've got the purple uh, aluminum wire from Smithers Oasis. I've got the handy uh, Cymbidium orchid tubes that we all save and hoard, right? Um, and so I'm just going to take the tube and uh, wrap the wire around it pull the tube out. Because it tapers down, I'm able to pull it right out and I don't have to worry about it getting stuck. And then I wrap it around the next area and then just traveling up the wire, wrap it around again. And very quickly, you'll have a chain of um, circles that you can wrap around your designs. And if you take your needle nose pliers and, excuse me, coil, the very beginning as we always do with our wire because we don't want sharp blunt ends. When you get a coil on both ends, you can link them together. If you need to add a little bit of U-glue to the vase just to hold it in place, that's great. But otherwise, now you've got a unifying effect. Okay, good. Got a lot to share. We're gonna move on from our party pack. All right, these handy dandy shelves are great for storing all of our designs. All right. And Lottie, I know you can hear me. Feel free to jump in if anyone has any questions. Okay, moving on. Oh, I love this one. Um, if you know me, you know I love to name things. Um, I give names to everything, the silliest things, and especially flower designs. This design I have dubbed Sunny Skies. And isn't it perfect? All the shades of blue, the shades of yellow, um, the round forms, it really gives you the effect of what you're going to look at when you um, are outside looking up at the sun. Um, the only thing that's missing are the clouds. 
So I think I actually have some cloud material here and the wire. So I have some white uh, or natural um, Mitalino branches from Smithers Oasis. And this is a rattan material. These come in lots of different colors. And what I do is I just take this and I think, I think I learned this from Mr. John Hosek quite a few years ago when he was our design program uh, lead and I was a UP. I just take the Mitalino, wrap it around my hand and then pull the ends back through, back through itself and attach it with the uh, bullion wire. And each time you do that, the Mitalino is gonna pop out and unravel in different ways and different patterns. And it's going to create unique shapes. Now I did this with uh, maybe five or six pieces. You could certainly do it with two or three. I do also recommend just running the uh, Mitalino through a little water just to soften it up. Um, it's got, it, it will kind of, uh, manipulate a little easier for you but once you take these clouds and you add them in all around you're really setting yourself apart and giving some serious movement not only that but it really coordinates beautifully with the uh, the whitewash box and I love these whitewash cubes um, because everyone loves them. The traditionalists love them. Uh, the folks who have country style decor love them, yet they've got that sleek look. So people who like modern and contemporary designs love them as well. So the whitewash box is great. Now, as I told you I would, I have um, crafted a social media message for you if you'd like to steal this. And um, so hashtag TFW, hopefully you can see that hashtag TFW stands for that feeling when. So your post may say something like that feeling when I spent my lunch break laying down looking up at the sky and you've got this photographed um, outside with a beautiful blue sky behind it and your followers are going to love it. It's interpretive yet it's pretty literal and everyone will get it. So hashtag that feeling when TFW. That's our sunny, sunny skies design. We'll Renee, I have a quick question for you. Yes, yes. Um, one of our attendees is asking, um, do you have any tips for keeping lamb's ears from wilting too quickly? Oh, gosh, yes. So we've got some Dusty Miller in here. Um, I, well, of course, your processing is so important. Um, DCDing your buckets, using your quick, quick, drip, quick dip hydration hydration solution when you're processing. Um, I have also, from a fellow ed spec, David Powers, learned a trick that if it does start to go down, um, believe it or not, what brings it back is boiling water. And I didn't believe him, but I watched it with my own eyes. If you put wilted Dusty Miller in a vase and you boil a kettle of water and pour it in, as it absorbs that hot water, Believe it or not, it perks right back up. Try it. DM me. Let me know if it works. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Okay. Well, and thank you, David Powers, question. for that tip. Yes. Oh, sorry. One other question about that um, design that you just showed us. Um, Cindy Reynolds is asking, do you recommend taping the ends of the Midalino so that they don't wick up? Uh, you absolutely could. Um, although... I don't think that's going to be a, a too much of an issue with this particular design, um, but you absolutely could. So if you take some, uh, some of the waterproof tape and tape the bottom, not only will it kind of bind all the bottoms together and make it easier for you to add it to the design, but it will also help keep the Mitalino drier um, and from wicking up. Um, but because I use the natural color, I'm not so worried about any of the dyes seeping out or anything like that. So I'm not too worried about it getting wet. Great question though. Awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, next design. All right, another one that I have named. Okay, this is the black Teleflora cube. Um, and it is super versatile. Right now, I am obsessed with black. It's totally on trend. I'm loving it. These cubes come in tons of different colors from Teleflora. They're super versatile. Um, I have named this design 
black, white, and red all over. So right now it's just got a little touch of the fuzzy red yarn on there because um, I like to add a little texture. Um, but I have another little bit of red to add to it. So I have taken some um, dried fan palms and I've actually spray painted them red using the Design Master color tool. Um, this is carnation red, that's the color. Uh, this is a full fan palm that started out this color, hit it with a little paint, now it's that color. This is the same as that, except I trimmed the edges. So it's really interesting that you can get the different forms out of this. So I am actually going to add this in back here. Um, dried material are totally on trend and a really great um, item to have in your shops right now while we wait for the market to stabilize again. And really awesome to showcase in your designs because of course they have lasting power. So you don't have, it's one less fresh product you have to worry about procuring. Um, and when you can change them up like this, when you can color shift them like this so easily, they're crazy versatile. So that is a great addition to my black, white, and red all over design. Of course, I would hit the other side with red as well. Um, but one more level up we can do is actually, this is a Hawthornia, and I have created a Kokodame ball on this. So that means I've just wrapped the root ball in uh, Spanish moss with some bind wire. It, this is a technique that comes from Japan. I'm not gonna go into it any further because there are two great places where you can find out more about this. Number one, on YouTube, Teleflora Design Education. Um, a few weeks ago, back around Mother's Day, a whole bunch of the EdSpec team put together a lot of design inspiration videos and Jenny Thomason made a great Kokodame instructional. So make sure you check that out. And also fellow EdSpec, uh, Joyce Mason Monheim has a wonderful YouTube channel where she has also played with the Kokodama. So check that out. Um, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add this right into the design. Oh, it so perfectly goes with the texture of the fan palms, the color palette and it gives them a keepsake. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you add a branded note onto this. So every little tag that goes out or on your pieces should be branded with your logo. Add a note that says, you've got a keepsake plant in here, wrapped in moss, take it out and you know keep it afterwards. So make sure you translate those tips to your customers. All right, so that's our black, white, and red all over. Next up, we have another a design in our black cube. And um, this is really fun. I have named this one Fiesta. Um, I love the colors heading into summer. It's just perfect. Of course, it's got my fluffy um, Oncidiums in it. It's also got some Pincushion Protea, some amazing everyone's favorite Free Spirit Roses. And then it's got this uh, papyrus greenery in it. So I have actually, I have some here. Uh, thank you. I have a lovely assistant helping me here. So thank you, May. So this is what papyrus um, looks like when it's not Renéified. Um, but I just took the papyrus and I held it closed, give it a chop with my clippers. And now obviously it's much shorter, but it's a really cool, almost firework-like effect. So you could see the options with this heading into the next few weeks. You could hit this with some glitter, hit it with some paint. Um, of course, if this um, style design is a little too much for your customer, you could show it very easily at a lower price point by adding in some uh, carnations instead of the protea. You're gonna get that same punch of color, the same visual effect. So you can show multiple options with this. Perhaps instead of the Oncidium, we use some yellow Austromeria instead. Again, same color palette, same effect, uh, but just a lower price point, which is really great. Now, I told you that I named this design Fiesta, and you know that I love it so much, so I'm going to be posting a picture of it on my social media account. But I'm not going to just post a picture and call it Fiesta. I'm gonna style this design, and I'm going to style it for hashtag TT, stands for Taco Tuesday. Now, I know that that's not a floral thing, but it is a thing all over the world. And I love Taco Tuesday. And wouldn't it be fun to post this design on a Tuesday with the TT hashtag. And when you style the photo, you're gonna go ahead and actually, just for the photo, you're gonna add some habanero or some chili peppers to it that you're wiring in. 
Um, of course, you could give your customers the option to include these, but you would definitely want a disclaimer and make sure that they are okay with that because of course, as we know, there are oils on these peppers that can be dangerous, but it's a lot more eye-catching when we've got these um, peppers in here. And then when we set it on the table to take a photo, we're gonna lay just a last habanero there and our Tabasco sauce. And that's the photo that we're gonna take for our social media and for our Fiesta design on Taco Tuesday. I love it, it makes me hungry for tacos, which I could eat seven days a week. Maybe after I have my bowl of ice cream tonight, we might whip up some tacos. <laughs> okay, that's our taco design. All right, we've got that there. Okay, next up, another uh, fun design that I, um, I was actually inspired to create this from fellow EdSpec Julie Poltler. Um, she created a really fun little flower cone. I sort of took it and ran with it and I, um, I offered these for Mother's Day. Um, I had a limited number of them and I completely sold out. So it's meant to be a door hanger and it's made out of um, peel and stick wallpaper. So we know it's waterproof, which is a must. Um, so I've, I pre-cut a bunch of sheets of those. I believe these are 18 inches by 20 inches. Um, but if you have any further questions, you can reach out to me afterwards. I can tell you how I made this. Um, and then inside, is just a little bundle of flowers that I put together uh, like a bouquet, um, treated it with a, bound it with the bind wire and put the really thirsty flowers in water tubes. And then I just dropped this in here with the no contact deliveries we're doing now. This is really fun and perfect. You just hang it on their front door, knock and beat it. <laughs> but you wanna make sure that there's a note that goes on this that uh, a branded note that lets them know that they do have to take these flowers out and put them in a vase um, because a, a lot of people actually thought that this was the container, um, which is really interesting. But the door hangers are really fun. You can do a lot with them. I've even added some of the dried bunny tails that I hit with a little bit of pink paint. Um, the, as a, again, dried bunny tails, totally on trend. Um, so I've got that door hanger and I actually made a miniature version with a bolder, um, uh, contact paper style uh, with just five little blooms in it. Again, um, these are long lasting blooms. This is a really fun gift to give to anyone and who doesn't love to come home and see something hanging on their door. I absolutely love it. So that is our door hanger. Let's see if I can get this on here. All right, moving on. Um, so you know, we're always going to have a market for sympathy designs. So I wanted to create at least one. And this is the um, Teleflora Angel of Grace uh, figurine. She is porcelain and she is beautiful. Uh, now, it, it often comes with a mix of flowers, which is really, really beautiful. I wanted to put her on more of a cloud instead. Um, so I've got 25 stems of carnations in the bottom and four stems of baby's breath, cut very short. This, this came together very, very quickly. Um, it's incredibly long lasting. You could make these up in the, and put them in your cooler and wait for the orders to come in. They'll last for a long time. Um, and this is actually, uh, a really great way to feature what looks like a lot of product, but it's really not if you think about it. One bunch of carnations these days is somewhere between $15 and $20 cost, um, and just a few stems of baby's breath. Um, now, how can we level this up a bit? It's pretty as it is, and I think a lot of people would really love it, but if you wanna offer um, a, an upgrade, we could certainly do that. I've got just um, three cymbidium orchids here that I have pulled off their stem and tubed, and I'm just going to create a focal area here just to the side of our angel and layer them into each other. Again, we know these cymbidium orchids will last for a really long time, even in the tubes. They're really, really great. Um, isn't that beautiful? Thank you. <laughs> um, now, confession time. I have to make a big confession. I've been in this industry, as Jean said, for over 20 years, um, but I just learned a few weeks ago by reading an article the real difference between Crown and Glory and Finishing Touch, um, these are finishing sprays that I've been sort of using interchangeably for years, and I probably could have just read the bottle, but it, I never thought to do it. So I thought I'd share with you what I've learned. So 
Crowning Glory is a finishing spray. Um, it's an anti-transpirant that helps with uh, the reduction of water loss. It is best used on things that have limited or no access to water after they've been designed. So that means corsages, boutonnieres, flower crowns, things like that benefit best from Crowning Glory. On the other hand, uh, Finishing Touch um, helps promote the opening of flowers, the color development, um, foliage life, and um, hydration. So this is actually best for long duration designs that have access to water. So this is what I would use on this if I was then going to put it in my cooler and um, help it stay alive as long as absolutely possible. So there's your uh, finishing touch lesson for our Angel of Grace. We may, we just had a quick question in from Chris Blackstone um, asking yes. what is the mechanic which holds the carnations together in the angel cloud? Oh my goodness, thank you for asking. I'm going to go ahead and rip this apart, just the back. Um, there is actually, when you get this container from Teleflora, it comes with absolutely everything you need. So it comes with the plastic dish, it comes with the angel of course, and I don't know if I can get her. Oh, look, I can. Um, the angel comes with a pick. This is, it comes separately and we set her on there and then we press that into the foam and then the flowers go into the foam. So it's very, very simple. Um, this took me maybe five minutes to make uh, and really effective, I think, for the uh, message you want to send to your recipient. And I hope Great, that answers the question. Yes, All right. thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, just a quick sip of water here. These lights are hot. Whew. Okay, next up. Oh, another one that I have named. Um, okay, I love this one. This is the Teleflora Bunch Vase. Again, like the cubes, these come in lots of different colors. This is an everyday design uh, vase. Um, it's, as I said, it's called the Bunch Vase. This is the clear version. I've got some beautiful Alstroemeria, carnations, hydrangea, all from Flower Buyer. Absolutely loved it, love it. Um, I designed it more in a, in a grouping style, so I've grouped my like items together. Of course, I've got this thrush of um, dendrobium orchids coming out the top. Now, the addition to this, uh, the fun addition is more Mitalino. I used the white, the natural, and the sunny skies. This is actually um, pink and green that I have, um, I've taken the, the top and I've dipped it in a little water, like I said, to make it a little more malleable. And then I just simply tied a knot until, and you don't want to pull too hard because you can actually break it, but uh, just until I got about there and then I stopped. And that takes almost no time, but it's really, really effective as an interesting addition to your design. Um, now, additionally, I added some of those pink and green um, Mitalino pieces to the bottom. And let me just show you how I did that with the alcohol. I don't need those. Um, so from my fellow Ed Spec, Kevin Yulvasaker, I learned this trick. If you use 91% alcohol and you uh, wipe down your vase with that alcohol first, let it dry. That takes all of the residue off. Anything that might make the U-glue slip off, it cleans it up. Uh, with this, I actually used uh, a U-glue strip, which is the larger of, uh, there's the dashes and the strips. I peeled off the strip, I stuck it onto the vase, and then I just really quickly created a pattern with the, um, the pink and green Mitalino, cut it on an angle just to give a little bit of uh, geometric uh, touch, and that is our Watermelon Wishes design. Now, we touched a little bit on photo styling when uh, we talked about the Fiesta design, but I want to just... Um, talk about it here as well. So when you're taking a, a photo of something like this for your social media, you may, um, perhaps you've brought watermelon in that day for your, uh, your a snack for your staff. And before you let them eat it, uh, you use it for a photo, the actual watermelon itself, or maybe you cut it up into smaller pieces um, and you have a bowl of watermelon sitting next to it. Here, I've just very quickly and roughly <laughs> made a little watermelon using the um, 
one inch flat wire uh, away from uh, Smithers Oasis. I've stuffed it with some of the pink sisal um, and wrapped it with some silver bullion to keep it all together. And then I just slid some coffee beans in here actually because they look like watermelon seeds. So that's something fun that you can put next to it. But by using a bowl of watermelon or something like that as well, it helps style the design. It also helps consumers understand what to expect for their size. So you see a lot of times floral designs are, are pictured with a little votive next to them. That's because consumers know how big a votive candle is. So they can automatically understand, okay, in reference to that votive candle, my design is going to be this big or this big. Um, so photo styling is really important for that reason. So that's our watermelon wishes. And I, this is a tall guy, so I have to swap him. All right. I love this container so much. I made another one with it. So here we have our wild wings. That's what I have named this one. This is called wild wings. Um, again, the clear bunch vase from Teleflora. Um, now I started, I created this one using um, an entire bunch of bear grass. I just took the entire bunch, gave it a snip so it had straight blunt ends, dropped it in, and that became my mechanic to hold up all my other flowers. After that, it's easy breezy. Got lots of different wildflowers in here. Nigella, Queen Anne's Lace, um, Buplorum, Ranunculus, um, uh, Crispedia. And it's perfect for heading into the summer months when we've got all this great seasonal stuff available for us. Um, I took some butterflies and using that same alcohol trick, I wiped my, my vase. I used some dashes to hold the butterflies on the front. Um, I had two more, so I stuck one in the top hole. And then I took another and I cut um, that butterfly up into pieces and just use the different feathers. Um, I you glued them to the bear grass pieces to create a lot of rhythm and bounce. And it's really, really um, a fun design. This one you wanna make sure that you maybe either show multiple variations of with different wildflowers, or you've got a disclaimer on there that lets you kind of off the hook so that you can um, give them the best value of whatever wildflowers you've got your hands on that week. So this is our um, wild wings. I've actually um, curated a, or I'm sorry, I should say I've crafted a social media post for this. So this one, it needs a little work, but this one I would put up on a Friday with the FBF, Flashback Friday, something like uh, flashback to simpler times of frolicking through flower fields and harnessing flower power, you know, back before COVID. <laughs> okay, so that's our Flashback Friday post. And we'll put this here. All right, so next okay. up. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, Janet, no, had, a so Janet um, had a really great question for you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you. How do you deliver the butterfly vase? <laughs> oh, well, I would, um, well, if we use the alcohol trick, the, uh, the butterflies are really on there. I would maybe wrap it with some tissue paper and box it and just make sure, you know, tell your driver handle with care. But um, they're, they're on there. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about that. Thank you. Sure. Um, I love when you pop into my, my right ear here, Lottie, so you can ask me a question anytime. <laughs> um, okay, so next up, we have another um, social media scene we're going to set. And so this is when you might show them beginning to end. So you're going to take all of your elements that you might use in a design, and you're going to set up a fun uh, sort of flat lay um, where you've got all of your different pieces sort of artfully placed and you'll take a photo of this and you'll post this and you'll say hashtag BTS behind the scenes. This is what's happening right now. This is what designer X is making. I wonder how it's going to look. Um, then perhaps you take a time lapse video of actually putting it together and post that or even better you, uh, you go live with the design of this arrangement. People absolutely love, love, love to see us do our thing. They love to see us work. So if you do a time lapse, um, many of us have that option on our phone. It just does it for us really quickly. Um, and then you can post that or you can go on Instagram live and um, that'll turn into an IGTV and it'll be up there forever. I promise you that people are not going to watch you do it and then try to steal it. They don't want to do it. They just want to watch us do it. So here's the design I created using all of those elements. I'm going to just drop that in this vase. 
So this is a really great um, utility moss basket. Um, I took that curly willow and I, I put a bunch in on this side and a bunch in on that side. I brought it up and bound them together to create the illusion of a handle. This is not a new design. We've been doing this for years, um, but I think it's interesting and people are excited to see like, oh, how did you create that handle? How do you make that illusion? Um, I took some really hardy ivy, wound it up the uh, curly willow, added a little bit of the moss uh, that coordinates with the moss on the basket for some unity, and then just some interesting textural details like some shelf mushrooms. I've got some Russian sage in here, the blue tweedia, which is so on trend. Um, if you haven't seen blue tweedia yet from your whole filler, you're going to be seeing a lot of that. Um, so this is my garden style design. I urge you to put this on your website after you do your social media post and then use the tools in your POS system from Teleflora and track the sales of this design. See what happens. It, when, I posted, did, when I posted it, did I get a spike in sales after that? Or perhaps I need to post something a little more bold in color or a little softer in color and fluffier and, and play with those posts and see how that equals sales. Um, you're not gonna get it right off the first, on the first try, but you've got nothing to lose, so why not try it? All right, there's our garden design. Okay, so um, I, a lot of people have come out with vases uh, lately that have a face on them. And I believe they're called selfie vases with a lot of customers and I love them and designers use them and they make really fun wacky hairdos out of the, out of the face vases. But if you ask me, Teleflora was the originator of the face vase because we've got the smiley mug. And so I really leaned into the times and I took our smiley mug and I put a little mask on it, <laughs> which is really fun. I just, used it, I tied a knot here around um, the ear, so to speak. I've got um, incredibly long lasting string of pearls uh, that I cut from a plant, bound them on a pick and stuck them in. These are gonna go and go and go. I've got, of course, a large succulent in here, which is a great focal point. Everything else is dried material. So I, I have, um, dry foam in here uh, and it's really lightweight. I've got some dried and bleached ferns and um, ruscus. I've got some dried crispedia, even dried dusty miller, which I actually dried in my basement. Um, I a few weeks ago, I thought, huh, I wonder if this dries. Well, guess what? I learned that it does. And so now I have that in my smiley mug design. Um, so this, I believe, is the original selfie. And what I want you to do with things like this is just to show some humor. I mean, people really love that. So don't be afraid to have fun with what you're designing. Back when COVID first started, we had all those fun toilet paper designs. It's, it's right up that same alley. I love it. Okay. Oh, our mask is slipping off. There we go. I love the smiley mug so much that I did a second design in it. So here we go. We've got tried and true topiary, right? Um, they never go out of style. Again, it's a great way to show off the container, just like with the mosaic vase. Um, I took a bunch of sunflowers and um, I actually used, may I take that spiral, thank you. Um, I used the uh, flat wire from Smithers Oasis because sometimes sunflowers want to go down. Right now these are perfect, but after a few days they might get a little weak in the neck. I took the one inch uh, flat wire and I started the spiral, just tucked it tight around the stem itself and then got wider and wider as I went out. Then I used that as a structure and I fed all of my sunflowers through it until I ended up with this topiary. Gave everything a chop, stuck it in my foam. Then I took a second piece of the flat wire just to make everything sort of tie together. I started it in the foam and wound it up the stems so that it's a cohesive look. Now, you may have noticed that I did not finish the um, the top of my design. We could add some baker fern or something like that. But um, I, if you follow my work, you may have seen me do this before. I really love to top my designs with coffee beans. Um, I have become an absolute coffee addict during this quarantine time. I drink a lot of coffee now. I can't wait to have it when I get up. And um, speaking of, that actually uh, leads me to my next social media clip that I have crafted for you. Feel free to steal it. Um, this is an oldie and the younger youngsters may not know what I'm talking about, but just about every night when I set my coffee pot for the next day, I think to myself, 
the best part of waking up. <laughs> I'm going to hope that you know, you know, you're singing along with me, right? It's Folgers in Your Cup. That's an oldie but a goodie commercial um, that I still think about all the time. It's really great marketing. Um, so this is going to be TBT, Throwback Thursday, to the Folgers commercial when you've got coffee beans topping your topiary here. I wish you had smell vision so that you could smell it because it's just TDF to die for. That's our sunflower topiary. Uh, I see I'm getting the, uh, the time signal from my behind the scenes team here. So I'm going to hurry up. I think we're just about through. Okay, so the other uh, trend that exploded when quarantine hit was a term called plant parenthood, hashtag plant parent. Um, many, many, many people took a love to plants. And so what I would encourage you to do is to think about subscriptions. A lot of shops are starting to do this as we head into the summer months. A lot of shops are offering fresh flower subscriptions that might uh, send to, to the folks once a week or bi-monthly or something like that. Um, and that would be great for fresh flowers. You can also do it for plants. So let's look at some plant designs that I put together here really quickly. And perhaps when you put together your subscription service that you offer folks, you ask them, what kind of a plant parent do you want to be? Uh, do you want to be a helicopter parent and uh, get have us give you a plant that requires a lot of maintenance? Um, are you more of a free range parent where you need to tend to it, but you let it go for quite a bit? Or are you a latchkey parent and you want something that just doesn't need any care? Um, you know, so that's sort of fun and you have your customers choose what kind of parent they might, they want to be and then once a month you get to send them um, a plant that fulfills their plant parenthood dreams. So that's really fun. If you haven't already looked into subscriptions, uh, flower subscriptions, I definitely urge you to do that. Look at what other shops are doing. Um, even better yet, partner with a local flower farm. That's a win, win, win. Um, so you, you really can't go wrong with this and it gets your customers coming back and coming back and coming back. Last design I have for you today um, is actually as we're heading into this holiday weekend, um, there's a lot of great fun things that you can do for the 4th of July. Um, but before I get to that, I want to just address a lot of really um, obscure holidays. Like for example, I believe yesterday was Take Your Dog to Work Day, which I do every day. Um, so when you see those fun and funky um, holidays, lean into that. Post a picture of your dog under your workbench um, or something funny. Uh, there's all kinds of silly holidays. Try to make something out of it. Even if it's just a quick little post, um, your followers will, will love it. So I've just got an, a fun and simple 4th of July design here, red, white, and blue in a standard um, five inch cylinder. Uh, I did a wrap on the inside with a fan palm leaf. I actually submerged that first and wrapped it around the entire inside of the vase so that you really can't see the stems. Um, the other fun thing I did on this is I took some baker fern, I stripped all of the, lead, the laterals except for the very tip, hit that with a little bit of gold spray paint, and in it goes to just have a little bit of a glisten and a fireworks. And do you want to know a way to make this OOC out of control? The way you do that is to actually add some glow bracelets. So I've got some here. These are from the dollar store, very, very simple. Um, but right before your driver delivers it or right before it leaves your shop, just give those a break, stick them in there. And uh, it's a really fun addition. I think the lights are probably a little too bright that you can't really see that they're glowing right now, but you're gonna have to take my word for it. Um, it's totally out of control. So in closing, I would like to thank you for giving up an hour on your Sunday evening to watch, and I hope that you've been inspired. It is really a thrill for me to be a part of this organization. Keep an eye on the um, Teleflora Industry Relations face Facebook page, as I'm, lots of goodies are coming up there. Check my Teleflora um, for the design education tab and see what's coming up next. Um, and with that, I think, Lottie, I'll throw it back to you. Thank you so much, Renee. Wow, my mind is officially blown. Thank you. I took a ton of notes, so thank you. I'll have to 
um, up my social media game. Now you have challenged me. Thank you. That's right. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to thank all of our attendees today. Thank you so much for um, spending time with us. Um, I hope that you are able to take something away um, that you can use in your shops tomorrow. Um, as Renee said, please follow us on Facebook. We've got a ton of stuff coming up. Thank you so much, Renee. You're amazing. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow me, you know about Bella. Bella loves to be part of my post. I made her a little green orchid collar here. That's um, adorable. So she just wanted to make an entrance and say hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh, thank you so much, Renee. I know how hard you've worked, and I know um, that between you and Jean, you were kind of talking about what's going on today um, in your area. So I really appreciate all your hard work. Thank you so much to all the attendees. Um, I will be posting um, this video. It takes a little while to process, but I will be posting a link on our Facebook page. So um, with that, I just want to say thank you to everybody and we'll see you again soon. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.